Hi everyone, happy Thursday! Uh, so I decided today that I was going to do a makeup collection video, um, also together with a little bit of a decluttering, um, because I'm giving this big box of makeup away before I leave Spain. I'm going to drop it off at one of the domestic violence shelters here in Madrid. Um, so I have a bunch of stuff here, um, all the stuff that I brought with me when I came, and then some of the stuff that I bought while I was here. I think it's a pretty good collection, um, so without further ado, let's get started so this video is not an hour long. Um, I'm just going to go in the order that I would apply my makeup. Um, um, also, my uh, my turtle Timmy is here with us today, so don't mind him. He's just kind of hanging out. So for primers, we're going to start off with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Face Base. <laughs> um, this is a really cool multifaceted product because it is not only a primer, but it is a moisturizer, and it kind of says what it is. It's a face base. You put it on before you put on foundation. You can even wear it on its own after you take a shower and cleanse. Um, I just really like the way that it works, um, and it leaves my face feeling super soft um, and ready for makeup. Um, I haven't really made that much of a dent in it, so that's exciting. So next we have the Too Faced um, Hangover RX Primer, um, and this is the smaller size. I don't always like to get big sizes of things that I'm not sure about because then I don't use them and then they're kind of just sitting there wasting space and then they become a waste of money. So I did get the small size and I still haven't gone through it all because I don't use that much. Um, this I brought with me and this has coconut water in it which I really like which means it smells good, it feels good. Um, and the reason I like this so much is because after you put it on not only does it moisturize but it leaves your skin really tacky so when you put on foundation it's great. So next up, probably the most famous primer in the history of the world, this is the Benefit Professional. Um, this is one of the mini sizes. There's one that's even smaller, which I also have, and then there's a big one, and then there's a really big one that just came out. Um, but the size is fine for me. I mean, I don't use it my entire face. I use it up here, here, and here. It's I'm not wasting it, so this is a perfectly good size for me. Obviously, you know the drill. Professional fills in your pores. I like it. It's good. Nothing much else to say about it. Another similar product um, that does a little more with smoothing out texture is the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer in the smoothing uh, form. I really like this one too. I have this one and also uh, the full size that I'm waiting uh, to finish this before I open it. Um, I kind of like this more than the Professional, not going to lie, because not only does it fill in your pores, but it kind of smooths out your face, kind of just like it says it's going to, so you have a really nice base for your foundation. And the last primer is one that I bought when I was back home at Ulta probably one of the best purchases I've made in makeup in the history of my using makeup. Um, and this is the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I love this. Um, I may have talked about this in my March favorites. I'm pretty sure I did because it was a March favorite. It is now an April favorite and I think it's probably also going to be a May favorite. Um, this is one of the best products I've ever used. It hydrates your face. It refreshes your face. It leaves you with the most perfect neutralized just revitalized skin to put foundation on or not to put foundation on. Sometimes I'll just wear it on its own. Um, but I really, really like this. It doesn't leave a purple cast on my face. Some people have said that it does for them. But I really think if you're in the market for a nice refreshing primer, this is an incredibly good product. So next we're going to go to foundations, which if you know me, you know that foundation is my favorite product in the makeup world. Some people are lipstick fiends. Some people really like eyeliner and eyeshadow. I'm a base person. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 foundations here, which is really not that bad. I don't think. I mean, I've seen people with a lot more foundations, but I also know people who have like two or one foundation. So whatever. Let's just get started. So the first one here is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. Um, this I bought here because I haven't been able to find it anywhere in the United States, and I am so glad I did. I know a lot of um, international YouTubers from Canada, um, from the UK, talk about this all the time, so I wanted to buy it. It's great. I'm really glad I bought it. So if you need a really just kind of relaxed, refreshing, hydrating foundation that's not going to add way too much coverage and look super like intense on your face. I really, really like this. And it's also a gel formula, which makes it just really cooling on the skin as soon as you put it on. So the next foundation is one that I jumped on the bandwagon really late with, but this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. Um, I I like it, okay? I'm not going to get rid of it because I spent $1.29 on it because it was on sale from the $5.99 that it already is. Um, and I'm probably going to use it those days when I want more coverage because it is more coverage than I'll typically go for. But I really like the um, kind of spatula thing that it has going because I feel like, I don't know, it's just like a different way to apply foundation. It's not a squeezy tube. It's not a pump. 
it's not one of those really annoying ones where you have to like pour it out. I just, I don't know, I like it. Um, and I think that it's a really good product, so glad I finally bought it. Next up is the number 7 Lift and Luminate Foundation um, with SPF 15. This was a impulse buy, an absolute impulse buy. I bought this because Kathleen Knights talked about it and she and I tend to have pretty much exactly the same foundation preferences, so I figured why not give it a shot. Um, I really like the packaging despite the fact that it's plastic. I don't know if you can see, it has like an inner tube and then an outer plastic thing and it's a nice pump. Okay, I'll grab that later. <laughs> um, it's a nice pump, um, and I just, I don't know. It's good. It's not the best foundation I own, but again, I'm trying to give it more chances to impress me probably during the summertime when I want more sunscreen. I, it's good. So next up is probably actually my least favorite foundation that I own, but I can't bring myself to get rid of it because I spent so much money on it, and that is the Dior... <laughs> Forever Skin. Um, this is SPF 35, Shine Control, Perfecting Makeup, supposedly. I don't know. I feel really so-so about this, and I wish that weren't the case because it's so incredibly expensive. Like, Dior's Dior. Dior's supposed to blow my mind, right? But it didn't blow my mind. It settled into my smile lines a little bit. It got a little weird in between my eyebrows, and I don't know. It just didn't wow me. I didn't put it on and go... <gasps> Oh my god, I can't live without this, which is kind of the feeling I want to have with foundation since I try so many. Um, but I'm still going to keep it and wear it more, see if I can pair it with different primers and see if I like it better, but eh. So next up, <laughs> the exact opposite of that foundation, probably one of the best foundations I've ever used in my life, and I would say it is a top two contender of my favorite foundations. And this is the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua. <sighs> This is like a child for me. I just, I cherish it. I bought this in Spain also because the price differential here to the United States is something like $30. Um, in the U.S. it's in the 70s and it was like 45 here. So I figured I would give it a shot. Also, Fleur de Force really likes this and I really like Fleur de Force's skin so I figured I'd give it a chance. And boy am I glad I did. This goes on like a dream. As soon as you put it on your face and you finish blending it out, you literally just feel like magic has happened. And that's not how I felt with the Dior, that's not how I feel with the number 7 or like really any other foundation besides one, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and I think that it really just makes you look really healthy and beautiful and natural, and that's really all I'm looking for in a foundation. You know, sometimes I think about it, maybe I don't like the Dior and I didn't like Lancome because they're too full coverage, so maybe I should just stop buying full coverage foundations. That would make a little more sense. But this super natural finish, it's a water foundation, obviously the aqua, um, which makes it really easy to work with and really luminous and fantastic, which is good if you have dry skin like me. Um, but it's also not going to get you greasy in your T-zone or any other places on your face. So I think a lot of people would really like this. Now the tie for first um, for my favorite foundation is the MAC Studio Face and Body Foundation. Huh. Second child. This foundation is amazing, okay? It's the same feel as the Chanel, but like a good $25 cheaper, and I actually found this first. Um, this foundation is buildable, but if you only put on one layer, you literally just look like a glowing, happy goddess. Which, I don't know, some people really don't like that. They don't like the simple foundation look. They want coverage, they want to be caked, and that's fine. If that's what you like, that's what you like, but this is what I like, and if you like that, you will like this. Um, I can put on more than one layer and build up kind of the amount of naturalness that I'm looking for, um, but I really do like it. Just one layer, beauty blender or a uh, brush, and even you can use your fingers with this. I just really think it's magical. Again, these two. Magical. If you need magical foundation, go here. Um, so next from MAC, another one that I actually just got is the Next to Nothing <laughs> Next to Nothing Face Color, and I'm a huge fan of this, actually. Um, it's not actually a foundation. A face color is not a foundation. It's kind of like a tint, not exactly a tinted moisturizer, but it's also incredibly hydrating. Um, the, the, the idea behind this foundation, um, I believe, was basically just to give you a barely there look while hydrating and evening out your skin tone, which is exactly what it does. Um, it came with a powder, it came with a brush, I do have both except I use the powder as a bronzer, um, and I just really think that it looks beautiful on the skin. Um, I would absolutely shy away from using this with a beauty blender because it reacts super, super, super weirdly to water. Um, I splashed my face one night when I was taking it off, and before I went in with the cleanser it was like weird kind of dew drops all over my face and I've never had a foundation react that way so this is not what I would consider 
take her swimming on the first date foundation, but it's really beautiful. So next up, we're going to go with e.l.f., which I don't think that they sell everywhere in um, Europe or anywhere else, but I know you can definitely get this in the United States. I bought this at Walmart. I honest to God don't remember the name of this foundation because it's not on here, but it just says oil-free SPF 15 sunscreen. I don't remember what this one is, I'm sorry, but it's in shade porcelain, if that helps you. This is the this is the little bottle. I love this foundation. I love that the packaging looks expensive. I love that it feels expensive, and it was literally like nine bucks. This is by far the cheapest foundation I own and one of my favorites. This is the only foundation with a lot of coverage that I actually really like for a day-to-day -day basis. I feel like when you put it on, it just kind of melts into your skin and does not settle into any fine lines. It doesn't make your texture appear more texturized than it is, and I just really think that it's a great product. So I'm not a huge fan of everything that e.l.f. brings out, that's for sure, but this was an absolute win in my book. So next up, we're going to talk about the one product I have that I have absolutely no idea where to tell you to get it. Um, this is the L Foundation, Mon Fond de Teint. I bought this when I was in Florence, Italy, and I looked it up online to try and see if there were any reviews after I bought it, and I literally couldn't find it anywhere. There's no YouTube reviews. It doesn't even look like it exists on the internet. So I'm not really sure. I think this might be a phantom foundation, but a phantom foundation that looks real nice on your skin. So I'm really sorry I can't point this, um, or point you in this foundation's direction, but what I will say about it is that it's really nice, really dewy, and it's actually the only product I have that is a little too light for me. I know, crazy. So I think I'm gonna save this one for when it's winter time, my skin is dry, I want that dew, and it's gonna be the right color. But I also might mix it in with something that's a little too warm for me right now and see what happens. But, you know, it's from Italy. Like, I'm not gonna get rid of that. I bought it in Italy. That's, that's meaningful to me, because I'm a makeup junkie and I was in Italy. So, next up we have the Bare Minerals Pro um, in Performance Wear Powder Foundation in um, Satin which is actually um, probably what people might think is a little bit too dark for me, but once I put it on my face, it actually blends in perfectly. So I don't know, maybe the color is really just not that strong between them, but I really, really like this product. Um, I don't usually like powder foundation, so I tend to use this on top of a different foundation, like the face and body, um, just to add a little bit more coverage and set it at the same time. But I also have used this on its own. I do like it. There's really not much bad to say about it. I like it a lot more than the regular kind of mineral... Uh, foundation that's in a little pot that they have but um I don't know performance wear yeah no it lasted all day I didn't get greasy I didn't have any trouble it didn't come off so yeah okay I like it and last but not least I have a foundation that I'm incredibly on the fence on um but I figured I'll show it to you anyway this is the Estee Lauder double wear nude cushion stick I'm so meh about this I wore it today and it has this kind of like sponge tip applicator that you like Put all over your face and technically you're supposed to blend it in with the sponge but it's so hard and I have no interest in doing that um, but here's the deal with this foundation I liked it so much when I first put it on and then throughout the day it started getting so weird up here my nose started coming off it was looking dry which is weird because it's incredibly luminous and greasy kind of when you first put it on so I definitely wasn't expecting that I really want to love this because I know that Casey Holmes loves this and Casey Holmes knows her foundation. So I'm going to try it with some different primers and see if I can make it work, otherwise I might try and exchange it. Um, but the store that I bought it at does not seem to have a very good return policy, so maybe I'll give it away. Um, yeah, so that was the last foundation. So now we're going to go on to powders. I only have three. Um, the first one is the MAC uh, Mineralized Skin Finish in Light. I like this because I can use it to set under my eyes. Um, as a little bit of a lighter color and also the rest of my face if it's a day where I'm not tan, which let's face it is every day. Um, it's a finely milled powder. I really like it. The uh, mineralized skin finish line is just really good in general. The bronzers, the highlights, the everything that they have. So um, I, I'm a fan of this. Um, and the second powder I have is uh, the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder in Neutral Buff, which I also really love. This is more of a skin color for me. It's a little bit dark, so if I have a foundation that the color is slightly off, I'll put this on top and then it kind of neutralizes it. I don't know, I like this. I like this. I like the foundation. They work well together. The only thing I don't have from that line is the concealer because I have heard nothing but bad reviews on it. But I'm a huge fan of this. It doesn't cake up, blends your face out really well, works perfectly under Fix Plus, works for me. 
And last but not least is probably the most obvious product that anyone who watches YouTube could have, and that's the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Um, I, it, this is the mini size because I took it with me for traveling. I'm probably going to pick up the big one once I get home, but I definitely do still have a fair amount of this powder left. I mean, I don't use it that often. I'm not like a baking person. Um, I do really like this. Um, I like that it's a loose setting powder that is white in tone, but it doesn't give you flashback because it does have a little bit of a beige tone to it. You'll know if you get it. Um, yeah, no, I'm just a huge fan of this, and I think that it's really good for setting your face or for baking if that is what you want to do on a given day, um, and it's just really fine, which I really like. So next up, we're going to go for bronzer. Um, this is the one I was talking about here, the Next to Nothing Pressed Powder in Medium Plus, um, but I use it as a bronzer because the color is too dark for my skin. Um, as a powder and I just really 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 like the texture. It's incredibly fine. It feels almost like velvet when you touch it and it blends seamlessly as bronzer. And I'm not a big contour girl. I've probably contoured once in the last year. Um, so when I have a bronzer I really want it to just do the job and give me that sun-kissed look and this does just that. The second bronzer I have is from Milani and this is the Soleil Baked Bronzer. I'm a huge fan of this. I mean, I started off with the baked blushes, and I think that the bronzers are just as good. They have this really pretty kind of shimmery texture kind of going on. It looks kind of like the surface of a planet. I don't know. Is that a weird thing to say? That's what it looks like to me, you know? But I really like it. The only reason that I shy away from this sometimes is because it can be a little bit shimmery, um, and when I'm bronzing, I'm not a huge fan, but that kind of depends on the brush that I'm using, so I do use it, but now that I have the... Um, MAC one, I kind of think I'm going to be using it less. Um, so next we're going to go for blushes. I only have like two and a half blushes with me right now because I don't really change up my colors all that often. So the first one is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso, which is also a cult favorite, a huge YouTube uh, product. And this is the color, and I really like it. It's kind of like a peachy, orangey coral tone, which is very different from most of the things I'll wear. Um, but it really looks nice. It's a nice wash of color on my cheek. Um and I think it brings most looks together quite nicely. And next we have the NARS blush in Orgasm because I'm literally such a consumer. I had to buy it, um, and I finally did when I got to Spain because, again, price differential. I could never bring myself to buy this back home, but now I own it. I like it. It's, it's a good blush. I, I think that it has a really nice shimmer, and it looks good on my cheeks. It's just not what I would pick for every look, which is why I like having the Luminoso as an option, too. Um, and last but not least is this duo, so it's blonde, bronzer and blush, and it's by Cargo, and it's in the colors Catalina and Medium. For some reason, I think that the Medium is referring to the bronzer and the Catalina is referring to the blush, but I'm not entirely sure. So this is the duo here. I really like both of these. The only issue is that they're a little bit hard to get to because the pan is cut down the middle and it's already tiny, so in terms of attacking it with your brush. It's a little bit rough, but once you get it, the colors are great. They both work pretty well, so I keep it for traveling. Um, so next, I totally forgot concealer, so we're going to go for concealer. Um, the first one I have is this Maybelline Green Concealer. Um, it literally just says green, correct redness. Um, and I just needed a green concealer, and this is, you know, a green concealer. I didn't feel like I needed to spend money on like an Urban Decay or Makeup Forever green concealer when this was going to do exactly the same thing. And guess what? It does. Uh, I'll put this on underneath um, my concealer on top of a blemish that has extra redness, which a lot of mine down here tend to. And then I'll put concealer on top and it'll be good to go. Um, so for regular color concealers, the first one I have is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, which I really, really like. I haven't used this in a little while. I think I accidentally put it away. Um, and this isn't fair, so you just want to make sure that you know that this is fair. That's not the lightest shade I've ever seen in my life, so if you're looking for a much lighter concealer, I'm not sure if this range is going to, um, be your friend, but if you're not, it's really good. Um, next up, I also have another Maybelline, and this is the... I don't know, it's just concealer. Also in fair, but see how this color is a little fairer than the other fair? Um, I, honest to God, I think this is a Fit Me concealer. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. I don't know why I was literally blanking on that. Um, but I really like this. It has just a normal doe foot applicator and it's a great concealer, okay? It's just good and it's affordable. And the counterpart to that concealer, the high-end version that everyone says it is a dupe for, is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which I, eh, 
I don't love, I don't hate. It's kind of crepey on me, but I keep it because it's travel size, easy for me to work with and um, go places with. So well, if I set it right away, it's it's fine and it's not problematic at all, but it's just kind of a little less easy to work with than I would ideally like in a concealer. And this is in light two vanilla. Um, I think custard is probably the most popular shade for this, but like I said, I'm a little bit paler. Um, so there's that. Next up, let's see if you can guess the most popular concealer so far of this year. What concealer has been in every video that anyone has posted? You guessed it, it's the Tarte Shape Tape, so I gave in, I bought it, and I like it. It's fine. I think I should have gotten um, a different color, to be honest. Look at the size of that doe foot. So unnecessarily large. It is really difficult for me to get like a small amount of concealer, because I'm not like a paint those triangles kind of concealer person. I, I don't really like that much, um, but when I do get the right amount of this, it actually really, really works wonders in um, brightening up my under eye in such a smooth and uniform way. So I really do like it. I just think that maybe for the um, summertime, I could go up to, I think the Fair Light was the next one, so I might check that one out. And then uh, next up, we have a couple highlighting concealing pens. I use them as concealer, but I think they're technically marketed to be like highlighting pens. So the first one is the YSL Touche Claw. Um, I like this product a lot. I know some people think that it's way too sheer and it doesn't do anything, but like I said, I'm not a crazy concealer kind of person, and since I tend to wear really sheer coverage foundations anyway, it usually doesn't work out so well for me to have a high coverage concealer on top of that. It looks kind of weird. Um, so I'll go in with this, and usually it makes my life pretty easy, but I think it's getting old because when I put it on, I get those little like white bumps, and I don't think that's a good sign because it didn't used to do that, so... I might have to throw this one away soon, but catch me buying another one. Um, and next up, we have the MAC Prep and Prime. Um, this is also the same kind of idea, like a highlighting pen. They both have this kind of tip. Um, I bought this when I got the uh, Next to Nothing bronzer, um, and I had like basically like an entire face of MAC going on that next week, and I don't know. I thought it looked really good. Um, for this, I got it in Medium Plus, which is probably not what I was expecting to buy at all but then she tried it on my face and it looked really good so I got it. It doesn't like highlight the hell out of my under eyes like I'm not looking to have like stars underneath my pupils but it works and I really really like the way that it applies and stays throughout the day. Um, so next I think we're all done with all that. So we can go in for some eye products. So for eyeshadow, uh, the first thing I have is the e.l.f. Mad for Matte palette. I really like this. Um, it's 10 shades, um, 10 bucks, so a dollar a shadow, which is pretty reasonable. And these two right here are my favorites. They don't have names, so I can't tell you what they are, but the first one and the third one. Um, and I'll use the third one for my crease and the first one all over my lid. I'm actually wearing it today. I really like minimal eyeshadow, so for me this is super, super easy. I can use one of the dark shades to um, darken up my outer V, but I don't have to go crazy because there's not that many colors in the palette. Um, next I have this single shadow from Nomad in Marrakesh Desert Sands. Is it both of those or is it just one of those names? I don't know. I really like this. This is kind of this shimmery, kind of literally looks exactly like Desert Sands color, so nice job naming it. Um, it's the only glitter that I have at the moment, um, so I'll use this on top of an eye look just to give myself a little bit of extra something something. Next up I have like, I don't know why I own this, but this is the Essence Quattro in To Die For. It's not anything special. The only reason I have it is for this white shade here um, because I didn't own any other like white eyeshadows and I like it for my inner corner and my brow bone and it was literally like two dollars so I didn't feel that bad buying it. Um, and last but not least for eyeshadow is the Morphe 35OM palette which hmm, this is probably the most intense makeup item I own. Why do I need all these shadows? You can literally already see that I have only used like seven of them and there's just way too many shadows for me but I really do like the colors I bought it basically for this section over here I mean these things are a little daunting to me I'm a little afraid of them I've used some of the like calmer oranges a couple of times but like I'm afraid <laughs> I'm really not that great at eyeshadow so I don't know if anyone has any advice on some looks with that particular palette please let me know because I would love to give them a shot so next up we're going to go in with eyeliner um I only have 
three eyeliners. I'm not an eyeliner person. Uh, the first one I have is the Physician's Formula Eye Booster 2-in-1 Lash Boosting Eyeliner Serum. Um, and this is a brown color, which I much prefer to do eyeliner with if it's not going to be like a winged eyeliner because I have blue eyes and typically lighter hair than this and the brown just tends to look a little bit more natural on me even though eyeliner is not going to be natural no matter what you do. And then for wings, which I will occasionally attempt, I have the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner um, in the black color, and I really like this. I really like the felt tip. I think that it's super easy to work with, super fine, um, and makes eyeliner easy for children like me. Um, and last but not least, I have the Skin uh, Bright Eyes Eye Enhancing Eyeliner, and this is a nude color. Um, and I use this um, on my waterline if I'm ever looking incredibly tired um, and need a little bit of a pick-me-up. So next we're going to go for mascaras. Um, I don't have that many mascaras, but the ones that I have, I really like. So the first is my all-time favorite mascara, probably one of the first ones I remember buying high-end. And this is the Clinique Lash Power Feathering Mascara. It looks really tiny, but this is not a travel size. This is actually the size of the mascara. Um, but I really like the um, way that the wand works because it it's a feather mascara, but you can tell with the wand that it really just like makes your lashes look like feathers, which... Man, super descriptive, right? But I really like the way that it works. It's a natural eyelash. It's not clumpy. It's not spidery. It separates, but it doesn't give you crazy volume. So if that's what you're looking for, that's not for you. Um, but I really like it for those everyday looks when I'm looking pretty natural as is and I just want a little bit of oomph in the eyelash department. Um, next up is the Maybelline The Falsies Push Up Drama Mascara. I'm on the fence with this. I mean, I bought it um, to do my friend's makeup because... She said that she um, enjoyed Maybelline mascaras, and I'm not a huge fan of sharing mascara, so I just went and picked this up. I think it's fine um, for a drugstore mascara. I'm not a huge fan of it, but like, in the event that I need it, I have it. <laughs> um, next up, we have the Kiko Extra Sculpt Mascara in the waterproof version. They have it non-waterproof, but I like the waterproof, and this is literally the only waterproof mascara I own. The wand is super duper weird. It looks like a bow tie. What if I, if I just kind of do that? Like, yeah, see? Looks like a bow tie. Um, but anyway, I really like the way this mascara makes my lashes look. It gives me so much volume. It separates. It does everything I'm looking for in a mascara, and it really wasn't that expensive. So I'm a huge fan of this. It's a little more on the dramatic side. So this is what I'll wear if I'm going out, if I'm doing something at night when I want my eyes to really, really pop. Um, so next we have my absolute favorite mascaras, these last two. The first one is the Bare Minerals uh, Flawless Definition Mascara. This is so natural but so gorgeous. It's a step up from the Clinique but a step down from the Kiko. Um, it separates my lashes, it gives me volume, it gives me length, it gives me dark, rich, black color, and it's kind of just everything I'm looking for in a mascara. I don't know why more people don't talk about this. I think this is very underrated. Um, if you want me to do an underrated products video, let me know because I think that would be super fun. I definitely think I have a few things um, in this collection that nobody talks about and they absolutely should, so this is definitely a winner. That's also not waterproof, but it does come in the waterproof version and nothing's different about the formula. And last but not least is a new buy, but one that I'm absolutely obsessed with, and this is the Benefit Roller Lash. This is the mini size, but that's okay because mascaras only last for three months anyway, and since I have, you know, five of them, why would I get a full size and then have to waste half of it? I'm obsessed with this mascara. Honestly, since the day that I bought it, I have been in love. And the wand is just so good. Just the shape of it, the way that it coats your lashes. It separates them so well, but there's no spideriness going on. And it just kind of, I don't know, does everything I want it to. It's just one of those products that's like exactly perfect. And I don't know, I'm really picky, so... I'm glad that that's a thing that Benefit was able to do for me. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, before we move on to a crazy amount of lip products, I just have some eyebrow things. Um, first off, we have the oy, Anastasia Dip Brow in Soft Brown. I don't know if this is still going to match me because I dyed my hair, but like, I'll probably use it anyway because I have so much left. Yeah, that should be okay. It might be a little bit warm, but... I'm used to my eyebrows not matching, so I don't really care that much. Um, I really do like the Dip Brow. It's a great product. I don't think so many people would rave about it ugh, rave about it if it wasn't, but um, I'm not always in the mood for a pomade. It's typically the last thing that I'll go for. That's when I'm kind of having a more dramatic 
kind of look going on, but typically I'll go for a pencil, which is why I have four of them. So first off, I have the Giorgio Armani High Precision Brow Pencil in the shade 1. I bought this the day I dyed my hair because my hair was literally almost black, and I knew that none of these pencils were going to work for me. Armani was having a sale, and I don't know, it looked really pretty when she tried it on. It's super, super fine, like the finest brow pencil I've ever worked with, which is why I like it so much. The only thing I don't like so much is this like weird kind of comb on the other end. It's not a spoolie, which I would prefer, but I'm not really going to complain that much because the pencil is so great. I'm going to be really sad when my hair actually fades and I can't use this anymore, but I'm probably just going to mix it so I still can. Next up we have the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which everybody knows is a really great product. I'm a huge fan of this spoolie. This is the spoolie I was looking for on the Armani, but I didn't get. And, you know, it's not quite as fine as the Armani, but I've been using this one for years and I really love it. Oh, and I think this is in the shade taupe. Nope, soft brown. Um, next up we have the uh, Goof Proof Brow Pencil from Benefit, which I also really love. Again, you get a spoolie, and then the amazing pencil that comes in this. It's just waxy enough, just creamy enough, does everything I want it to, and helps to keep my brows down in place. There's obviously no wax on this, but it kind of has enough in it that I don't need a wax. Um, so... I don't know, I'm a huge fan of this, it's just kind of the color's a little off now, so I might pick up um, one in the correct color because I really did enjoy working with it. And last but not least, I have the most underrated product I have ever heard of in my life, maybe second to that mascara, and that's the Smashbox Brow Tech To Go in taupe. Yes, this one's taupe. Yes, this one's taupe. I am obsessed with this. So it has this kind of end, like the um, brow definer and sort of like the uh, goof proof right there but the way that the formula works just like magically makes your brows into these beautiful little caterpillars on your face I don't know if everyone wants caterpillars on their face but you know what I'm saying and it also comes with this super nice gel here that I will use with other pencils even um, that I really think just does the job so 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 well it has a little bit of a tint in it too so that's good I don't know I just really think that this pencil has like the two things you need for eyebrows in one and that's why it's called the brow tech to go but I really think it's great and more people should try it out. The only downside is it only comes in two colors. So I guess that's probably why more people don't try it out. Oh, and I also have this uh, Femme Couture Perfect Arch Clear Brow Gel just in case I need some brow gel that's not that one. So last but not least, we're going to move on to lip products. And I have like 400. Just kidding, it's not 400, but it's definitely quite a few. Um, we're going to start off with the liquid lip section, because um, everyone likes to hear what liquid lips people like. Um, so the first one I have is the Wet n Wild uh, Liquid Cat Suit in Rebel Rose. I really like this. I think that this, I wouldn't say it's underrated, because I've definitely heard people talking about it, but I really like the shape of the doe foot there, because it really hugs my lip. This is the color that I'm wearing right now. Um, it is mauve it's pink, and it... Um, dries down a little bit darker which I think looks really good on a lot of skin tones. I've had a lot of friends try this out and it looked good on all of them. Um, so next up we have this Smashbox um, liquid lipstick, always on liquid lipstick in Misconduct which is super dark <laughs> and literally everyone um, at Easter was telling me that this is so 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 dark. Why did I wear this to Easter? I don't know. Um, but it really, I think it looks good, and you know what, I'm not going to listen to my mom when she tells me that it doesn't. I love you, mom. But I like red lipstick, and you don't, and that's okay. So next up, we have the Vice Liquid Lipstick from Urban Decay um, in 1993, which is kind of like a brick kind of brown color. It's also kind of mauve also kind of taupey. I really don't know how to describe this color other than to say that I really like it. Um, I think it looks super good on, um, much better than it does in the tube, and I know that a lot of these lipsticks did not go so well with uh, the people, but I really think that this color is good. Also, they have that in a regular lipstick as well. I just preferred the uh, idea of a liquid lipstick. So next up we have ColourPop. Um, Ultra Matte in Midi. This is the only Ultra Matte that I've kept. I actually got rid of a bunch of others in this declutter that I was telling you about, but I just really like this color because it's just light enough and it's the only color that I have like this that I actually enjoy on myself. I try to get other like super baby pink kind of soft nudie colors like this and they tend to make my teeth look really yellow and look supremely crappy on me, so I don't usually like them but this one I really like so I'm dealing with the fact that it makes my lips as dry as the Sahara. Um, next up also from 
ColourPop is the ColourPop Ultra Satin in Lost. Probably my favorite red. Um, it just, I don't know, it just looks really good on. I think maybe because I'm so pale, reds um, react to my skin tone a little bit differently because some people can wear red and it doesn't look over the top. When I wear red, usually it looks a little ridiculous, but I really like this color. I also love the Ultra Satin formula. Um, next up we have this Bare Minerals um, liquid lipstick from Gen Nude in Infamous. I really like this. I have another one. It's called Boss, but I have absolutely no idea where it is. Like I thought that I brought it, but I guess that I didn't. I really like this. It's got a little bit of a peachy undertone when you put it on your lips and it's so creamy, so unbelievably hydrating. It looks so good on and stays on and feels fantastic all day. It's creamy. You know, it's like a creamy liquid lipstick. So if you need one of those, check this out. The whole line is great. And last but not least, we have this Body Shop uh, Matte Liquid Lip in Windsor Rose. This was also an accidental buy because um, I was buying foundation there and they threw in something and I didn't know what it was and then it was this and oh my god am I glad. This is such a beautiful color. It's like a brown pink. Um, barely there. When I first put it on I was like is there anything on my lips right now because it doesn't look like there is but I applied a couple of layers. It's also got that creamy kind of moussey feeling like the um Bare Minerals one does, and I don't know, I just really like the way that it looks. It also stays put, which you wouldn't expect from a creamy liquid lip, but it totally does. So next up for the lipstick lipsticks, I only literally have like three right now that are actual just like lipstick form lipsticks. This is the Smashbox lipstick in Famous, the Be Legendary. Um, this is a mini size, I got in a set, but I'm a huge fan of this. It's kind of like the perfect nude for me. Um, I'll put it on at the end when I finish my makeup and I just need a little bit of lip color. Um, next up we have MAC in Mer. M-E-H-R, is that how you say that? Mer. I'm gonna go with Mer. Um, I just really like the color because it's a little bit darker um, than a lot of the other sort of nude brown colors that they have, but I really think that it looks good on me, um, which is why I bought it for myself. Um, and last but not least in the lipstick lipstick category, we have the gem of my life, the most beautiful thing I've ever purchased, and this is a Giorgio Armani lipstick in F504. It's the Rouge d'Armani Shears, and they're totally sheer, I understand why, but look at that pink are you kidding me it's just so pretty like i look at it and i just get happy the only problem i have with this is if you put on too many layers you get a little bit of that like white stuff on the inside rim of your lips and nobody likes that and i was hoping that with a 38 dollar lipstick that wouldn't happen but it does so whatever i still love it i'm still gonna wear it, it doesn't matter so next up we're gonna go um for a couple more just kind of lip paint type of deals and a stain. I don't know. I have a bunch of stuff going on here. Um, I have the L'Oreal Infallible Lip Paint in 310 Topless. I like this. It's a different color. It's unique. It's not like anything that I own, so I'm going to keep it. It's gray with a little bit of purple undertone going on, and I really think that it looks good for an evening uh, kind of look. Next, we have the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream, which is literally the same exact kind of packaging as the Body Shop but I'm pretty sure this came out first. And this is in Monte Carlo. I just also really love this red, but it's just a completely different formula than the ColourPop one, so I keep both of them. I actually have another one because that one was starting to dry out, so I like it that much. I never buy duplicates of lipsticks. Um, next, we have the Sephora um, Rouge Lip Tint in Brown Tint. Great. Well, that's a lie. That color name is terrible because it's more of like a brick red. It doesn't look brown to me. Does that look brown to you? It's not brown. Anyway, um, I really like it. I think that it's a beautiful lip tint, and it looks really good on me. It stays put, too. It's incredibly long-lasting. I can literally go like this, and nothing will come off. And next, um, we have two Maybelline Color Jolts in Berry Naughty and Stripped Down. I really like both of these. Um, people have said that these are dupes for the... Um, what is it? Too Faced Melted Lipsticks, but I've tried those and I don't like them, so I think that these are better. They dry down less, which means they're obviously not kiss-proof or transfer-proof, but they're more comfortable, which I think is totally worth it, because I can just decide not to kiss anybody while I'm wearing it. Um, so next, I'm going to go for lip liners, and then we're going to do glosses last, because glosses are my favorite. So first up, we have the, what is this, Rimmel 
Uh, lasting finish in a thousand kisses. Is that the name of it? Must be. I don't know. Yeah, a thousand kisses. Um, this is just a really nice nude that I will put on under probably any of these lipsticks. Um, it's a pencil which I don't really love because I don't like sharpening things. Because I'm really bad at it. Like I'll sharpen things and I'll get down to like here and it's still not pointy. Like I I don't know. I can't help myself there, but anyway. Um, next up we have a Sephora retractable lip liner, which I like much better. Um, Rouge Gel Lip Liner it's called, and this is in Creme de la Creme. And this is... Oh. Okay. Also a pinky kind of nude color, but it's just a little bit darker, and I just prefer this um, applicator to the Rimmel. Um, next up we have another Rimmel, uh, but this is the Exaggerate Lip Liner in Red Diva. And this one is retractable, and I love this. This is super fine-tipped, and I really just like the way that this applies. Um, I'll wear this under the Monte Carlo or the Lost um, often. And we also have the Smashbox Always Sharp Clear Lip Liner, which I really like because I can put this under anything, and the purpose that it serves is to keep your lipstick from feathering, which I have a lot of problems with. Um, and it's just clear, also super pointy. Very good investment because sometimes you don't have the right lip liner to match your lipstick and then you are in trouble. This just really helps everything to stay clean, you know what I'm saying? And this isn't a lip liner, but it's the MAC Prep and Prime um, lip. <laughs> um, you put this on before super drying um, liquid lipsticks and it kind of helps. It literally turned around in the tube, are you kidding me? How did this happen? Whatever, I'll fix that later. Um, but it, it really does a good job of moisturizing your lips and preparing them for really intensely drying lipsticks. I think it was made for the um, Retro Matte collection, um, but I don't own any Retro Mattes. Um, and last but not least, we're going to go in with glosses because these are like my favorite part of makeup. <laughs> um, first of all, we have this Maybelline Color Elixir in Caramel Infused, which like... This doesn't look very caramel infused to me. It's definitely pink, but that's okay. Um, it just has this little doe foot that I really like the shape of because it kind of comes to a point and makes it really easy to get into the corners. This is just a super nice gloss. I only caution you because it tastes a little funky. Like, just kind of weird. Like, you put it on and then you accidentally touch your lip with your tongue and you're like, ew, that tastes odd, but it's not a big deal. doesn't mean it's bad. It's been like that since the beginning. Next, we have the Butter London. Um, whew. Lippy Lip Gloss in Coconut Frock. I love this. Um, I bought this at Marshalls, actually, when I was back in the States, and I was really impressed. The only thing I don't like so much is the applicator because it's like a brush. I don't know if you can see that. It's not a doe foot. You, like, brush it, and it's got brush hairs, um, so it can be a little bit more messy. It's also kind of sticky, but if you put it on, it kind of just works, so I like it. Next up, we have the NYX Butter Gloss in Angel Food Cake. I have a bunch of these. I just only brought one because I had so many other lip options. I really just like this kind of like dark pink, almost purple color. It's a nice wash of color. It's not sticky. It's not goopy. And it just looks really good. Um, next up, we have the ColourPop uh, Extra Glossy Lip in Bestie, which I really like. I do. I like this. I, the ColourPop glosses are way better than their Ultra Matte lips. Um, so if you are going to invest in a ColourPop lip product, I would suggest this or the Ultra Satin Lip. Um, next up we have the same product, the ColourPop Gloss in Fairy Floss, which is also one of my favorite products in the entire world. It's just such a perfect pale color that just either alone and makes your lips look super pouty and cute, or you put it on top of something and it adds a really, really nice shine. Um, and last but not least, my favorite gloss, um, one of my favorite lip products, probably, hands down, is the Buxom Gloss in Dolly. I've had this for a while, and, like, I'm just praying I don't run out because I really don't want to buy another one. They're not cheap. But I love the doe foot, everything about it, the color, the shine, the staying power. The only thing that I have to warn you about is that it's a little tingly. Like, you put it on your lips, and it feels like mint gum has touched your lips. Um, but I really do love it. And you know what? I think that's it. And I really don't think that this video has any free time left. So I'm not going to show you the stuff I'm decluttering, but I will show you the inside of the box. Oh. I'm getting rid of all of that. Um, so if you want me to make a separate video with the stuff I'm getting rid of, I'm happy to do that. Um, but otherwise, have a great weekend, um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!